Good morning from Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. We're here because there's a rocket launch today. So hopefully we make it in in enough time and over to the Saturn V building so that we can see the rocket launch go up as close as you can get without being media. So let's go see what we can figure out. So this is gonna be interesting. The gates don't open until nine. The launch is at 1036 and we have to go through back check, walk all the way back, get on a bus, drive to the viewing center, and then get out and find a spot just in time for the rocket to go up at 1036. We made it in. We're one of the first people in and we're running to go get on the bus so we can get to the viewing area. And there's a helicopter going by. So this is good. There's only about like four or five people ahead of us. So we're doing it. Oh, they're pointing us over there. Okay. I wanted to give a big thank you to Delaware North for providing us tickets to come see the rocket launch today and to check out the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. This is exciting. If you guys are coming into town, Make sure you check and see if there's a rocket launch happening and we're gonna experience that together today. So we're here in line and there is still kind of a wait for the bus and you can see all the people behind us waiting as well. We're heading in. I don't know when the buses are coming, but it's a uh, 9.10 and they're telling us, I think that the bus is gonna come at 9.30 maybe? Space person walking around, talking about space. Come back, you'll be out there. Waving at people. Space person. Here comes the bus. Do 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 do. Here comes the bus. And I said, I'm excited to go watch a rocket launch. Yay! These are all the people trying to get in to get to where we are right now on the bus. I don't think they're going to make it. Look at that line. Thanks, Dave. I'll be your tour escort to the Apollo 7 Fire Center where you're going to view the launch. Thanks, Dave. Give you an idea how big the building is. Look at that flag. That flag's 209 feet tall, 110 feet wide. Take the Statue of Liberty on its base with the torch. Stand it up inside that building, drive it through the doors, and you'll still have about 200 feet left over. One of those pads over there is where we're going to be looking. There's already people sitting up there. Here we go. We're trying to find our spot to watch the rocket launch. Everybody's running. We're heading into Banana Creek launch viewing, and I think that this will be the best view. There's bathrooms over here too, how wonderful. Here we go, we're all set up, up high. The rocket is right in that area over there. Now we got about 40 minutes until launch time. I wonder what that alligator is gonna do when the launch happens. It's gonna be pretty loud for him. There's our countdown clock over there. And then they're gonna do a, uh, a webcast. That's pad A of Launch Complex 39. That is the most famous launch pad in the world. That's where all the men who walked to the moon took off from. That's where they launched Apollo 13 with astronaut Tom Hanks on top. <laughs> That's where they launched our first space shuttle, Columbia, and our last space shuttle, Atlantis, and 80 in between. Today, that launch pad is currently being leased, being leased to that private company, SpaceX. Since February of this year, they have launched 12 Falcon 9 rockets from that launch pad. What did they launch? Commercial satellites, government satellites, and satellites for things that we don't talk about. Now keep going to your right, you see four real thin towers sticking up above the trees. Those are lightning masks, approximately 300 feet tall, and right in the middle of them, you see a dark gray object with a little pointy thing sticking up and that's the Falcon 9 rocket with the Dragon capsule on top. You are 6.3 miles away. That rocket is going to land and then you're going to hear and feel a sonic boom simultaneously. At 25 minutes to go.
is supersonic. And this is able to make out a small sonic movement at about to hit some max Q, which is maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's the point at which the rock is pushing hardest against the atmosphere. Just finished that uh, stage of flight. And that engine chill gets the uh, engines cold enough, uh, just in the way that the first stage engines perform its chill. And coming up shortly, we're going to have a few, a few things in quick succession. The main engines are going to cut off. Uh, two stages are going to separate. The second engine will start. In the first stage, is then going to make its way back towards landing zone one with a boost back. It is launched, and now we're waiting for the first stage to come back down. It should be over there. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, in just a second or two, that landing burn, the center engine will go. Take it softly down to the ground. On the left hand side, let's tune in and watch this landing burn. Landing burns just started, as you can see. Watch for those landing leg deploy. Uh, just a second. Or two. Perfect landing. Now we just wait for the sonic booms to come through. So there you have it. I would suggest if you come out to see the launch, or a launch, you don't try to film it like I did. I was having a hard time seeing what I was doing. Don't know if anything was in focus. Don't know if it was zoomed into the right spot. So much sun everywhere. Think I got it though. Think I got it. We were go for launch and we heard it roar. Look at this. Oh, this is a Saturn V. Now before we explore a little bit more today, let's go into the Moon Rock Cafe and get something to eat. I'm hungry. Watching a rocket launch really works up an appetite. Just notice they have beer for sale here. I'm gonna open this up in just a second, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a warning. This is uh, $15 worth of food here. So there it is. There's my bacon double cheeseburger. Now that we've finished our lunch, let's have a look around in this building. And I wanna go check out the Apollo 1 Memorial over here. I've never been in there and I've never seen it, so I'm excited to see it. What we've seen in past videos or past visits to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, the memorials they have are very nicely done. Probably one of the coolest looking effects I've ever seen in my life. It's telling us about Gus Grissom, tells us how long. Wow. This is really impressive. Tells you what everything is. Here's something that we see very often as Boy Scouts of America here for Chaffee's display. The Apollo spacecraft Block 1 hatch it was originally designed to be open in 90 seconds and then it was redesigned to be open in 5 seconds. So I don't know if this is the one... Oh, this is the Block 2 hatch. So this is the one that could be opened in 5 seconds. These are the original hatches. The actual block hatches from Apollo 1 spacecraft. Holy cow. As we leave, they have a smoke screen with the badge. This says this area may not be suitable for all guests. So this is the hero's walk, as if we are walking out to the capsule. This is the configuration that they would have been seated inside of the capsule. And this outline right here is the door that they said took 90 seconds to open. Just to give you guys some context, Apollo 1 was a tragedy where there was a fire inside of the capsule on the launch pad, and we just saw three mannequins sitting inside of the capsule. Those three mannequins represent the three astronauts who lost their lives that day. They have a full-size replica of the lunar module cockpit. Looks a lot roomier than what we just saw before. But I mean, for two people in here, it's probably not that roomy. We're in a vault area where there are a bunch of Apollo artifacts. And here's a television camera. Look at that. It was so small. Really impressive that that is what sent out images from space. But I guess it doesn't have the lens on it, maybe. 
probably was just a little bit bigger with the lens. We're kind of doing this a little bit backwards because when we first got here, we ran out to watch the rocket launch over there without going through this entry area. So we're going in now to watch this show again. Here we are in the firing room of Apollo 8. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. First stage preparations are completed. All systems are ready, okay. Because normally you would go and see that show before you go into the Saturn V building, but because we already went in and saw some of it, we're done now. We're going back to the bus and heading back to the main complex where the Rocket Garden is and where Atlantis is. The James Webb has two main scientific goals. Studying the birth and evolution of galaxies and learning about the formation of stars and planets. First stop, the Atlantis building. One of my favorite things to do out here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. The sky calls to us. Carl Sagan, the anti moana Because the ocean calls to her, the sky calls to Carl Sagan. opinion I think Atlantis and the way that it's presented is worth admission to the Kennedy Space Center visitor complex alone it's really amazing here is some International Space Station and space shuttle food that they had some gross looking asparagus some real gross looking scrambled eggs M&Ms pineapple chicken salad what are these green beans and mushrooms? Why are they white? Back here at the back end of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, and I wanted to show you guys, we were just reading this sign, and if you look, there's all kinds of damage to the tiles back here from debris on the launch pad, kicking back up and hitting the tail end of the Space Shuttle. The sign also says this Space Shuttle was launched 33 times. Check this out. This wrench flew on missions STS-11 and STS-121. That is a space wrench. Here's some other tools that may not have actually flown on a space shuttle. But they are specifically engineered to go on the space shuttle. Look at all the burns on the bottom of the space shuttle. This is real interesting. Space Shuttle Atlantis, 33 missions, and here are the 33 missions. All the mission patches lining the walls here. And it seems like some of the astronauts have signed it. Like Bob Springer, right there. Sam Gemmer. All of them working for a common goal, but their cultural differences and unique perspectives only strengthening their mission. Sounds like the same over me. As members of multinational. This is pretty neat. Inside the gift shop, and I'm very tempted to buy this NASA meatball wearing a Santa hat for only nine dollars or ten dollars but you can only wear it once a year. Well, maybe like a couple of times a year, but the Santa NASA meatball is a deal because this one without the Santa hat is $18. Before we leave, I wanted to make a stop by the rocket garden. Look, you get to go through a Christmas ornament and they've got garland around all of the light posts. Here is a Saturn V F1 engine. This thing is so big. Here's the Christmas tree at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. It's very nice. I like this design a lot. And I can't imagine, I can only imagine what it looks like when it's all lit up at night. Cause you can see they do have some lights inside of here. Bet you it's cool looking. I think we're gonna come back out very soon and go back into Heroes and Legends. Cause I really enjoyed this exhibit. 
and then hopefully see some other new things because there's an astronaut training experience that's opening up over there very soon. There you have it. That has been our trip to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex to watch a rocket launch. Like I said, we are coming back for the opening of the Astronaut Training Center, so we will experience some of the other aspects of the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex the next time. But with that being said, we are off, and we will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price. Look, it's a bobble.